Going back several years, there used to be a Thai vlogger, and his name was Kev in Thailand. Unfortunately, he passed away. But when he was active and when he was vlogging, this is God five six years ago. I remember him making a video, and it was titled something like, either the video was titled this, or what he was talking about was in relation to this. But essentially, what he said was, in Thailand, you don't make friends; you only make acquaintances. Now. At the time when I saw that video, I thought, oh, he's very miserable. You know, I've got loads of friends, right? And I kind of thought, you know, he just, he's just a grumpy old dude. However, having stayed here in Thailand for so long now, I kind of do feel like he may have been onto something with what he said in that video. Hey, what is up, guys? This is Brett here from brettdev.com, and welcome back to the channel. Now, typically, when people become expats and when they move to foreign countries, it's a very exciting time, right? So people, you know, they're, they're moving it from their home country. They're trying to start new life. Maybe, maybe they're not becoming experts. Maybe they're traveling. And amongst all of that excitement, amongst landing in a new place, comes the excitement of wanting to make new friends. And when you move to a country like Thailand or when you start traveling, you're going to have the opportunity and the ability to do that like in abundance. As you travel and as you go around the world, it's so, so easy to make friends. And the reason for that is because all of the people you interact with and all of the people you encounter generally doing the same thing as you. So like if you're traveling, you're going to meet other travelers. If you're moving to Thailand, you're going to meet other people who are also moving to Thailand and who also share a love of Thailand. Okay. So essentially as an expat or as a traveler, you'll always have that one thing in common. Not only that, but oftentimes when you are moving abroad, you're leaving all of your family, all of your friends from your home country, and you're all by yourself or you're with maybe just your small family or something like that. And you're lonely, right? You need connections. You need, as humans, we need social interaction. So we're kind of lonely, we're kind of vulnerable, and we very, very easily connect with other people, right? You see, whilst you have a common connection in the fact that you are foreigners in a foreign land, that's all you have in common, okay? And if you're not careful, you can very, very easily mistake acquaintances and connections you meet in foreign countries or on the road and hurry that friendship along and treat it like it's a deep, meaningful friendship like you're used to with your friends back home. One thing you have to remember is the people who you meet abroad aren't always who they seem. And unfortunately, when especially when you first come to a foreign country, you have no real way of verifying who they are. And you can't even really rely on your instincts. And what I mean by this is, let's say you're from the UK and you meet somebody from the UK, they come up to you in the street or you meet them at, you know, an event or something like that. You can get a pretty good read on somebody. You know, if somebody's like a bit of a scumbag and you're like, well, don't go near that guy because you've grown up around it. You, you know, good English people, you know, bad English people, you know, people that are in between. You can kind of get a read on people. Unfortunately, when you come to a foreign country, especially when you've just got to a foreign country, it's very difficult to get a read on somebody. So as somebody, for example, from the UK, I'm from the UK. When I first got here, I didn't know a good American from a bad American. In my eyes, everyone's just American and they're all lovely and cool. Um, I didn't know a good Australian from a bad Australian. I just thought, wow, they're all from Australia. They're all lovely and cool. I'll just be friends with every Australian. But as you know, as everybody knows from their home country, People from your country aren't all the same, right? People around the world aren't all the same. You get good English people, bad English people, good Americans, bad Americans. And if you're an Englishman, you can tell the difference. If you're an American, you can tell the difference. When you're a foreigner, you can't. Okay, so you have to be very, very careful of that when you're meeting people in a foreign country. If you are moving to a foreign country, if you don't know anybody and you want to make connections ahead of time, a great place to do that is inside of Nomad School. So Nomad School is my free online community. It's got over 1,500 digital nomads. It's an excellent place to network. It's an excellent place to ask questions and get answers. All you have to do to get access is to visit nomadschool.com or click the link down in the description. Another thing that you'll encounter is a lot of people like to move to different countries to try and kind of reinvent themselves, to become somebody else. Now, this can be a good thing. But it can also be a bad thing, right? If somebody's moving from their home country, you don't know the reason why they're moving. They could be looking for a better 
more positive life, or they could be running away from something and trying to escape something. So that's something you have to look out for. And there's, all, there's lots of stories of, you know, you could speak to anybody in Thailand who's sat next to somebody in the bar. And I always say, it's amazing how many SAS veterans you'll meet in a bar in Thailand, because it seems like every single one of them is retired here. The reason that's quite funny is because essentially what I'm saying is you just meet so many people who lie about their past and who are just absolutely full of shit. And you meet them everywhere. And it's so easy for them to lie and to be full of shit because you don't know them. You can't verify their background. You know nothing about them. Uh, you don't know anybody that, anybody that they know. So they can just make up this entire fantasy story and tell you whatever they want or whatever they think you want to hear. And, you know, these aren't the same sort of people who are just coming for a better life. These are people who sometimes have, you know, ulterior motives and are looking to maybe take advantage of another foreigner or something like that. So you have to be very, very careful when it comes to people's backgrounds, what they tell you, and have a good kind of instinct to know whether or not is this guy or girl full of shit. Now, when I say ulterior motives, what am I talking about? If you look on the news in Thailand, you'll very, very rarely see foreigners getting in trouble with Thai people. Oftentimes, a lot of the crime that is committed against foreigners is committed by other foreigners. So when you get here, when you move to, to Thailand or to any other foreign country for that matter, you most people are trying to do it to better themselves. You think that you're going to get here and surround yourself with other people who are trying to better themselves, but a lot of people just aren't able to. Okay. And what happens is as you begin to better yourself, if you do something good in your life, if you start to make money, if you start to, you know, prosper you'll find that you're going to be surrounded by a lot of negativity and a lot of jealousy. Because essentially, what happens in a place like this is everybody is in survival mode. Everybody wants to move abroad. Everyone wants to stay abroad. Everyone wants to build a good life for themselves abroad. And this is why we see so many foreigners scamming other foreigners, pulling tricks on other foreigners, borrowing money from other foreigners and not giving it back. All of these crimes that are committed amongst foreigners, particularly monetary crimes, is because of this. It's because everybody is in survival mode. So you have to you have to be aware of that fact. And when you're in a place and when the connections you make and the people you become friends with are in survival mode, this is why I always say it's better to hang out with long-term expats versus hanging out with people who are just traveling or who have just arrived in the country you're arriving in. Because when people are in survival mode, they will prioritize that above your friendship every single day of the week okay and it may not mean turning around and scamming you it may not mean tricking you but it will result in them being envious of you it will result in them being jealous of you like i say it's human nature people are in survival mode people turn against those who are you know doing what they can't do some of the warning signs that i would tell you to look out for if you are moving to a foreign country are firstly people who try and latch onto you and become your friends really really quickly so you'll notice that when you are living abroad, and I've noticed it many, many times, that people sometimes just latch onto you, they cling onto you, they'll ask you for your contact information, they'll send you messages all the time, and they'll basically just act like fucking weirdos. And there are so many fucking weirdos in Thailand, so many weird foreigners, and I'm sure there are so many weird foreigners all over the world, right? Like I said, they, they, why, why are they here? Sure, a lot of people are here for a better quality of life, but there are a lot of people that are here for other reasons, and they're just proper odd, okay? You can feel it. You can get a sense of it in your gut. You know if somebody's behaving strange. Before, I never really used to pick up on it that well, and I used to give people a little bit of time a day. Now, if I spot somebody that's a weirdo, I'm so well-versed in spotting them because I encounter so many of them. I just say, mate, you're fucking weird. Go away. I don't want to talk to you. Like, it sounds harsh, but that's what I do, okay? Because you will encounter a lot of them. And what they will try and do is they'll try and cling on to you and make become really, really good friends of you. And you're like, you have to bear in mind, you don't know these people, right? Oh, you're in Thailand. Oh, I'm in Thailand. Oh, I'm traveling. Oh, you're traveling. Great. Let's be best friends. No, we're not best friends. I don't even know you, okay? You have to kind of have that attitude to kind of steer away, steer off these people, because these people are always, always trouble. 
okay? They never really bring anything of value to your life. They try and leech off you. They'll try and do all sorts of shit. So just be very, very careful of people that try and latch onto you too soon. Another thing that you should look out for is people's backstories, right? So I can't tell you the number of people that I've met out here in Thailand who say things to me like, oh, my family don't talk to me, or I hate everybody back at home, right? If you ask them like, hey, do you have, any, do you have a wife? Do you have any kids? Do you have any, any of this sort of stuff? And they were like, no, no, nobody talks to me. Nobody likes me. You then have to wonder, okay, if nobody likes you in your home country, if your whole family won't talk to you and you're out here on your own, uh, you're probably not a very good person. There's probably a reason behind why that person has that mentality and that attitude. And it's probably not going to be somebody you want to become friends with. Now, the last thing that I'll tell you to look out for, and I kind of touched on this earlier when I talked about people who you know, have all these big plans but don't really have their shit together. Um, but more particularly, what I want to say is look out for people who ask you for money, okay? Look out for people who you know, are in kind of desperate situations or are, li are living off their savings, um, don't really have their shit together. And if they ask you for money, never, ever lend them it, okay? If you're a foreigner living abroad, do not lend any money to other foreigners. And I'm not talking about like, oh, you you know, you're out and your friend who you've known for a while was like, hey, can you spot me fucking 20 bucks? Fine, right? Whatever. But if anybody asks you to invest in their business idea, to, um, you know, lend them a large sum of money or gives you any fantasy story about why they need money from you, chances are you're probably not going to get it back. Okay. So just that's the third thing you need to look out for. People who don't have their shit together and who ask you for money. The second, if I meet anybody, out here and I've not been and I've not been friends with them for at least a year and they ask me for money or to be fair I could be friends with them for years and if they're asking me for large sums of money they better have a really fucking good reason and even then they're not getting it all right sounds harsh I don't lend people money I'm a foreigner in a foreign country people that you may think are your friends who you may have been friends with for one or two years who you may think you know like going back like I went back to earlier in the video it's survival mode. When people are in desperate situations, people do desperate shit and they will fucking rob you faster than you can blink. Okay. So yeah, look out for those types of people and don't lend anybody any money. That's it for this video. I hope you got a lot out of it. Now I'm not just trying to fear monger here. You can make good friends abroad, but the thing is just be very, very careful. Okay. One question you should ask yourself is take all of your commonalities away. Take away the fact that you are both in the same country. Take, take away the fact that you might both be from the same place. And ask yourself, would I be friends with this person in my home country? This, does this person have the characteristics and the qualities of the friends that, I've had, that I have back home and the friends that I've had back home for, say, 20, 30, 40 years? If they don't, just be very, very careful. Be on your toes. And lastly, always trust your gut. That's all for today's video, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. And I'll see you in the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.